a powerful praise. The Bible says the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah. Wherever praises go, our blessings is bound to come down. Come on, let's give it a once more for the praise. <laughs> Hallelujah, for the praise thing. We do appreciate God. Have your seat for a while. Hallelujah. I want to bless and tell the Lord thank you for every one of you that continue to lift the name of Jesus higher and higher. I want to bless the Lord for you. I want to take this time on behalf of my beautiful, dynamic, special one and only wife. And uh, to um, appreciate uh, you all, Pastor Kufa, for keeping the church and all the deacons and deaconess, praise and worship of the hair of the praise in media, every department. We really bless the Lord for your amen. I mean, maturity is something that is so vital. And I'm seeing the maturity in Goshen. Everybody may not be mature at the same time, but I'm seeing some level of maturity that we can go out and come by no confusion, no complaint. Like before, it was not a small thing. But we want to bless the Lord that maturity is really, really happening in Goshen Universal Church of God in a very special way. Amen. We also want to tell the Lord, thank you for Brother Emmanuel William and his beautiful wife, Sissy Yvonne, Suki. Hallelujah for keeping the house. Amen. While we're away on our beautiful, beautiful vacation. Amen. Vacation, I was praying that it shouldn't end. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was so wonderful. It was one of the best, um, you know, vacation we ever had, especially the place we went in Hawaii. The people are so, if I stand here to speak on the treatment of the people of Hawaii, it would take my whole time of the sermon. Hallelujah. They are so welcoming. They are so nice. They are so, I mean, there's so much nice people. Hallelujah. We want to bless God for Bishop John Kunku and his beautiful wife. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I'm so, Pastor Kofa, he even taught nothing. About Bishop Kuhn. Amen. Bishop Kuhn is a special man. I can say that. Not everybody is special. <laughs> but Bishop Kuhn is a special man. Amen. Please get to know him, get closer to him. He's sweet. He's a very, 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 very special man. Hallelujah. I have no regret. I have no issue with him. And I bless the Lord for God making him my parents. He and his wife. For God making them our parents. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> now there's something I want to say. And it's very, very powerful. Amen. We went to church in Hawaii. And I was sitting by my wife. And the pastor kept speaking on courage. The gospel is just one. It flew everywhere. We've been speaking on courage here. To remain on our courage is the importance of being on a courage. And we saw that we just kept looking at each other. We said, wow. She expanded on the word courage. She talked a lot of things that some of us don't even know. We take this courage for granted. I want nobody to control me. I ain't got to be on anybody and all of that. You are heading for destruction. It's very dangerous. Amen? But I bless the Lord that we sat there. We didn't just go for vacation, but we learned a lot of things in Hawaii that we can also bring home. So I impart our people. Hallelujah. When they're talking about hospitality, we, the people got it there in a very special way. And I, yeah, I can't stop telling God thank you for Bishop Kong and his wife, who is my father in the Lord. He went beyond being a spiritual father that I can relate to him as a biological father. We bless the Lord for him. Now listen to this. Listen to this. It, it is. I mean, it's so. It's so. Now, God gave me the message. You can be so much close to grace and not cross the line. A lot of, of times the reason why grace don't benefit us is because we cross the line. You can be familiar with your past but not to cross the line. And that's the level a lot of people don't know. 
they cross line. For the whole time, we're with Bishop, I mean Bishop, by the grace of God, God have connected this great man of God all over the world. He's so very important to the play. When I stand to talk about Bishop, I won't leave from here. But he is a special man, all I want to say. Amen? Then there's something that I grabbed when I was you know, in Hawaii. And I want to share this. These people put us in a five-star hotel. They spend money just because Bishop Kuhn is connected to his, to his parents. And he introduced us as his spiritual parents to his parents. They took us so great. And they really, 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 really show us great love. Amen. Yeah, he marching. To every event we win, the ticket costs four hundred dollars for per person. And she said, "No, don't bother. We we're going to take care of it. The hotel. I don't want to even tell you the price of the hotel for one night. But the people took you. Hawaii is very, very expensive. Very much expensive. We bought one burger twenty-five dollars <laughs> for a burger. Amen. Hallelujah. But these people took care of it. And now listen to me. There's, there's a message God gave me. Now listen." There are some things you look at it a little easy. Amen? But it's not as you think. There are some things we take advantage of because we are so close to it or we're so familiar with it. So we take it for granted. Now, if we're going to go by ourselves, me and my wife, I'm telling you, with all the grace of God on our life, if we're just going to go by ourselves, we're never going to get the kind of privilege, the kind of enjoyment, the kind of fellowship that we have. But it was because of the grace that we were right on. And sometimes you think it's easy, but it is great. Many times, many of us think that, you know, because we see other people doing certain things, we think we can do it. I'm not talking to somebody here. Now, the only person that will understand me, listen to me, and hear me very well. I'm coming to my message, but I want to take my time to talk about this. Hear this very well. Now, if you have never owned an apartment or a house before and you're stopping with somebody, you think it's easy. <laughs> Let me repeat this. If you never own your own place before and you're stopping with somebody and the person paying all the bills, you think it's easy. Get on your own. <laughs> Amen? Find your own place. Get your own house. When the bills start to boom by you, you will appreciate the person that you are honor and we're doing everything for you. But many who have not owned their own place before, it looks so easy. People see how close, I mean, all the, all the, uh, the privilege that we have with bishops taking up places. I mean, we sat down with royalty. It was my dream when I was in Liberia many years ago. I really wanted to enter Hawaii because I used to love a movie called Hawaii Fowl. Hallelujah. But it was true bishop, the grace of our bishop will in, in ever me to enter the house of the man who made the movie, Hawaii Fowl, to stay in a building that he, that, that he made the movie, to sit over the, uh, uh, the water that he made Hawaii Fowl. I mean, I couldn't stop thinking. I said, God, this got to be the grace of God. And sometimes we see it so easy. Sometimes when you see Steph Curry making three points, I mean, the ball was falling down making three points. I'm like, what? He was on the floor, and he threw the ball with his one hand, and still went in the basket. And you think it's so easy, because it's, it, it look, come on. Go do it and see. Don't overload grace. Don't overload grace. Don't overload your connection. Because it might take you. I learned something from Bishop when he was preaching. Listen to me. I don't care how close to that man of God, I would never cross the line. For the whole world with him, the woman said, Favor, stop there. Don't do this. I mean, I was a like a boy, I was a armor bearer and everything. Amen. Amen. I honor the grace that on his life. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Here's a man the whole world is one. People call him from all over. He didn't stay, he take us like his children. He wants us to have what he has, to enjoy what he enjoyed, and not stay across the line. Because many of us, when we're close to grace, we see grace and all we are the same. The grace that we're closer, we think that grace and all are the same, and we made our mistakes. No matter how you're close to the grace, 
that is blessing you. Never think that you are equal with that grace. Amen. 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 When I went all around, Bishop was ministering. I was, I'm a bearer. He didn't even give me a microphone. I was happy. <laughs> Amen. The certain places we went around the world, he gave me a microphone. The place I didn't. We came to the hotel. He was teasing me. He said, I saw you. You were looking around. Spend it in your coming. You were seeing that thing. <laughs> but I didn't give you the mic because we were going to leave from your three o'clock. <laughs> He said, Prophet, he said, I read you. I said, they're all picking here. Too much thing. He's seeing too much in it. <laughs> he said, but I will not get you in the microphone. Amen. I will stay home. I love that. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's give it up for my bishop, John Kunkun, and his beautiful wife. Amen. They're going to be here. We're having a, a deliverance service. You can't afford the message. You know what bishop is called to do. No demon can survive in his presence. He's going to be here from the 13th all the way to the 20th. And that's time. He even he even begged for that time because it was not part of his, the people who, who the people that invited him. So we had to even he had to even ask for it, beg for it. He said, "I can't come here, and I don't reach to my children." In Jesus' mighty name. So let not take it for granted. Somebody said, "Don't take it for granted," and God will surely bless you. Amen. Imagine my wife and I was going to leave from here and go to Hawaii was never going to meet the people we met. But it was only because of the grace that we were riding on. And that grace came from the bishop. We met people who were not a one-year-old, people that are 100 years old, went to the prayer harbor. I mean, just name it all. Then the people in Hawaii you can't die. <laughs> because everybody we met was 92, 98, 175, 82, 83. I like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Most of it all, they love God so much. I know you're waiting for me to say that. They love the Lord so much. Service begins seven. They dare five waiting. And guess what? They're having service outside where they are ten. Speaker everywhere. Nobody calling police for them. They love the Lord. I pray right spirit upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Let's get to the word before I take all the time to talk about Hawaii. And I'm planning to take the whole church, get your re, uh, you all ready, amen? <laughs> <laughs> you all. Hallelujah. All right. This morning or this afternoon, as a fresh student, that uh, last, the last time I was here, I said, I'm going to introduce a topic that I deem it necessary that a uh, lot of Christians are lacking this thing. A lot of Christians who call themselves Christian, or let me say so-called Christian, they are lacking this thing that I'm about to talk about. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? I want to introduce a topic, and I'm going to continue with this topic for some time for us to really, really know, because with all this topic, with all this, you will never achieve what God has called you to achieve. I'm not just saying it because I want to say it because it's something that I practice. And that's what I want to introduce to the church. Bless God for Sherry. Sherry, bless God for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord for you. Amen. Pastor Cole, who bless the Lord for you as well. Amen. Who bless the Lord for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I love you so much. Amen. She took care of me good on the vacation. All right. <laughs> That part got to come in. She took good care of me. Hallelujah. Good, good care of me. Amen. Ah, sometimes it's good to send the children away. Uh, anybody want them for vacation? <laughs> Hallelujah. Very, very important. A lot of Christians don't understand this thing. May God help us. Somebody say, God help us. I see many call themselves Christian, but so to speak, they are not Christians. Not everyone who call themselves. I can call myself Obama right now. Am I Obama? It's not how you call yourself that make you. Amen. And the only reason why God has given me to you to help you to achieve your God giving potentials. That's my true meaning in your life. Now, I didn't come to preach to everybody because not everybody will accept my message. I will not be a fool to even think that. There are some, even as I'm preaching, they, 
they, in their brain now, they, 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 they will take what they want to take and throw out what they want to throw out. Spit it out. But I thank God for you that the Lord will test you to accept what I'm about to give you. Amen? I want to introduce a topic here. It's called the grace for a disciplinary life. <laughs> Amen? The grace for a disciplinary life. How many of you know that a lot of people call themselves Christian, but they are not disciplined Christians? Amen? Amen? When you are not disciplined, you can't achieve anything on this planet Earth. People that achieve their career or their goal, there are people who are disciplined. Who discipline themselves and train themselves because discipline and training are the same. Because if you are not disciplined, you're not trained. And I remember sometimes when we see a child misbehaving, especially in Africa, the one I'm from, we say, but who trained you? I mean, the boy ain't got no discipline. Then you know the child is not from the home. Hallelujah. Because there are many children who call themselves children, but they are not from home. When a child is from home, when a person is from a spiritual home and a physical home, you will know by the training. And don't get me wrong, there are some of us who will hear it, who will see it, and will reject it. And will not go anywhere. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. My prayer for Goshen's and my prayer for we all is that God will help us to live a disciplinary life. A disciplinary life. When you are not disciplined, I come to realize you will never ever, I repeat myself, you will never achieve that which you are called to do. Whatever you are called to do, it takes discipline to do it. Uh, nobody hearing me here, but I'm speaking to somebody here. Amen? Whatever you are called to do, it takes discipline for you to complete what you are called to do. Forget about the grace. I know some of you say, oh, the grace will help me. There are many who have grace, but they are not disciplined. <laughs> many have grace, but they are not disciplined. Somebody say hallelujah. Listen, the grace of God is not for us to misbehave. The grace of God is to help us to live a disciplined life. Can somebody hear me here? The grace of God is to help us to live a disciplined life. Now hear me and hear me very well. Jesus says something that is so powerful. One day, he saw in his vineyard, he had planted seeds. And he watered the seeds. And the seeds started to grow up. The other day, they came by and saw that grass or, 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 or we have grown among the tide. I mean, Tar have grown among the wheat. He planted wheat. He planted wheat, but then Tars have grown among the way. Guess what happened? One of the disciples said, Father, shall we go and remove the tar from among the way? And Jesus said, No. Or the wheat from among the tar? He said, No. He said, Leave it alone. Let it all grow together. Because just by removing the, 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 the wrong thing, you might make a mistake to remove the right thing. Amen. He said, let it grow. So there are many of us who think we are good things. We are growing among the good things. So people are not really seeing who really we are. Because we miss among in the crowd. We miss all in the crowd. Am I speaking to somebody here? So everybody come to church Sunday morning looking so good. Dressed so wonderfully. Hallelujah, somebody. We look so good, but inside all for the weed. Amen, somebody. 
Shall we remove it? No. Let it grow together. He said the time is coming that he, Jesus, will separate the goats from the sheep. There are many of us inside church. Our motives are different. We came to church for so many things. Not everyone come to church when they came to church. Some came to church, not to church. And, and, and I'm speaking to somebody. Not just ghosts in church. There are many who go to church to look for chicks. Hallelujah. And many go to church to look for husband. Many go to church for different, different reasons. But I thank God. Some of us just come to worship God. Is there anybody that just came because you came because you love the Lord? And yes. you didn't come to look for anything. You didn't come to look for a check. You can't show your dress. You can't show the clothes you're wearing. You can't show your hair. But you just came because you just love the Lord. Is there anybody here can raise your hands? I'm here just for the Lord. I'm not here because of the clothes that I came to show. I didn't come here to show what I, who I am. I didn't come to show my pregnancy because other thought I couldn't get pregnant. I didn't come to show my ring because other thing I couldn't get married. I didn't come to show my weed because other thing I couldn't wear. But I just came to tell somebody I came for the law because if it was not the law who have brought me this far, I couldn't be here because when I think on the goodness of the law and all he has done for me, my soul cried out. I could have been in the hospital. I could have been in prison. I could have been locked up in jail. But when I think on the goodness. I am not better than those who are lying down in the mortuary. I'm not better than those that are lying down in the hospital. I'm not better than those who are locked up in prison. But it was by the grace of God I am who I am. Paul said not by myself, not by my strength. I didn't have to laugh for somebody because they don't have it today. I don't have to bully somebody because they don't able to get something today. It was only by the grace of God, not by yourself. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hear me. Hear me. Listen well. And we're preaching to you every day with things with thing that we want to please you. It's not about pleasing you. It's about what God called us to do. It's about what God called us to say to you. Amen, somebody. Whether you believe it, you're on your own. If you don't believe it, you're on your own. You accept it, you on your own. You deny it, you on your own. Whatever you do, you on your own. Jesus said, Blessed are they that have ears. Oh. Let it hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The grace for a disciplinary life. Many people have grace. Let me, let me, let me get back to my test so I can I can get out of track. Somebody shout hallelujah. Why they say that many people speaking of the grace of God, but they really don't do what God have called them to do. Hallelujah. They can't finish what they start. And then you start something you don't finish, you are not called to do that thing. Because what you are called to do, God will give you grace. There are many who want to do something because we see others doing it. Many who want to do something, we want to get at somebody, and the only thing we can get at somebody is to do what they say they are doing. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And whatever you are not called to do, you can continue. Yeah. Amen. Because you are only pretending to be somebody who you are not. So you will only do it for a while. Right. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you only want to ring because you see Sarah getting married. Uh-huh. And you don't know anything about marriage. Because you feel now that your age on the colonna and Sarah age on the can she get married and you say I'm gonna no one ever died for getting married late. Somebody shout hallelujah. You wait for your time. Because there are a lot of women who are now wife. A lot of women are not ready wife. You see, I was in a plea at a field and the Lord told me to raise sons and daughters. So I said, Lord, I'm speaking to you whether you believe it or not. That's what God told me. I mean, I'm convicted. He said, I want you to raise sons 
and daughters. Amen. Now you're in Goshen all over the world. Hallelujah. And they started testing some children and they started responding so quick. We've been waiting for this for long. We couldn't tell you we're waiting for this for long. Raise sons and daughters. And I asked the Lord why. The Lord said because raise sons and daughters so they can raise sons and daughters as well. Because hear this and hear very well. When you refuse to be a son, you will never be a father. When you refuse to be a daughter, you can never be a mother. Amen. Not every mother are mothers. Amen. Not every father are fathers. Not, not just because you have a child does not make you a father. Oh, you're talking right. There are responsibilities that come with being a father. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So if you refuse to be a son, you can never be a father. I don't care how many children you're born. It don't make you a father. There were a lot of bastards on the street. They don't have fathers. But somebody brought it into this world. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. There are many crying for future. Oh, oh, my future is tomorrow. Oh, I want to do this tomorrow. Listen to me. Nobody here gets future. Your future is today. <laughs> Lord, help me. Somebody shout hallelujah. You don't have tomorrow. You're not sure of tomorrow. There are people who tell their family, I'm coming back. Girl in the car. I will be by home. They never go by home. So, your tomorrow is your today. It's what you do today determine what you will be tomorrow. That's it. That's it. So, if you don't discipline yourself today, you will suffer tomorrow. People spend their entire life working today so they can sleep tomorrow. So what you will become tomorrow is who you are today. Ah, nobody hearing me here. Somebody shout hallelujah. So stop putting us on time. I will do this tomorrow. No, you have no time. You have no time. <coughs> Amen. Stop procrastinating. Stop it. Do what God called you to do now. And forget tomorrow. Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow has its own problem to think of. Think about today. Now also, let me, I'm going to get injured this because it's part of one of my messages. I'm going to inject it in this message. Amen? Don't worry about two things. Don't worry about yesterday. Don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Tomorrow can never come back. Tomorrow is gone. I mean, yesterday is gone. Thank you. Yesterday is gone. You can never bring yesterday. So why are you worrying so much about what out of your life yesterday? There are people who spend time repairing yesterday. And whenever you repair yesterday, you can never have today because you're living in yesterday. No one's supposed to focus behind. So if you want to dig my life yesterday, you are living dead. Somebody say hallelujah. Because there's no way I can live in yesterday. There's a reason why God didn't pour out behind your head. Nobody hear what I'm saying. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do you know the reason why God did not put eyes behind your head? So you can't look back. Mm. Nobody hear what I'm saying. There are many still looking back. They are not disciplined to keep going. I come to announce to somebody, as long as you're looking back, you will never get to where God wants you to get. Because your body don't have eyes. So every time you go to hell, you got to turn around and be looking back. And you kept wasting your time. So somebody shout hallelujah. Keep on focusing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the apostle Paul said. I leave those things that are behind me. Yeah. There are many of us still living in yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Why are you worrying about your ex? Do you know the word ex? The word ex means you are. Ex means yesterday. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So in order for you to advance your life, to get to the place where God wants you to get, you need to forget about yesterday. Amen. You made a mistake. Yesterday is gone. Start going backward to pick up broken pieces because broken pieces can never be original. No. When something is broken, you try to mend it together, there will still be a mark. There will be a scar. 
You can rip something and they still want to repair it. There will still be a mark. Why are you walking with a mark on you? Why you say want to be repaired? Oh, she did that to me yesterday. So what? It's happening. You can't undo what has been done. Hey, it has been done already. Walk ahead. That's what the Bible tells us. If you want to follow Jesus, you got to load up. Because he is the author and the finisher. Don't load. Load up. Keep looking up. Discipline your life. Because discipline is sweet. In the end. Live by this scripture. Stop rushing. God want to bless you. Amen. The reason why a lot of believers cannot achieve anything because they depend on the grace and forget about discipline. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Amen? Amen? They depend on grace and forget about discipline. Now listen to me. I have done research and I have studied. There's nowhere in the scripture no two places, no many places that God said my grace is sufficient for you. The only place that God said my grace is sufficient for you, it was to Paul. Amen? So I want to tell you, everyone of you that are watching, I want to announce to you that grace is not enough. Grace is what? Not enough. Do you know what God said to Paul? That my grace is enough for you? Because Paul was disciplined. Thank you. Oh, Lord, help me here. Hallelujah. When you are not disciplined, grace is not enough. Find yourself a disciplinary life and live it. Do you know why people don't pay time and offering? They are not disciplined to it. Do you know why people can't keep one husband? They are not disciplined. Do you know what people say marry and they're looking at yellow pumpkin? Ah, they are not disciplined. Hey, hey. Amen. Amen. There's a reason. You, 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 you marry and yet you're still, you're still looking at all the yellow women. Why did they marry one? Somebody say hallelujah. The reason because you're not disciplined. And if you're not disciplined, forget about Christianity. You will crush. You will clash. You will go for a while, but you will clash. There's a way that seems right to the man to end that destruction. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you don't want to get married, don't get married. Period. <laughs> Amen. But don't get married, and then you're not disciplined. Somebody shout hallelujah. The reason a lot of men can't keep one woman because and none of them don't have grace, though. They're grace there. But you, do you know what? They like discipline. So don't just pray for grace. Pray, Lord, help me to be disciplined. Yeah, that's it. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray to be disciplined. Because it's just a matter of time. Because if you are not disciplined, you get, your character is not right. Because it takes good character to blend in with discipline. When you are disciplined, your character comes right. Am I speaking to somebody here? Because character is like a pregnancy that don't go beyond. You can't fake it. I don't care how, how many times you are pregnant, how many months you are pregnant, you will hide it for a while. Give it six months. You wear the pain. In fact, no size for you say in pain anymore. <laughs> so what you need to do to, to portray a good Christian life that will speak for you tomorrow when you are disciplined. There are some things. I'm not perfect. I'll never claim to be perfect. Because perfection is not completed until Christ comes. But there are some things I will never do. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen to me. We, I, we came, down, I came down a hotel to go get some food. Carry us there. I met this girl sitting down on the step. Beautiful girl. Very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. She is. Because I got good eyes. Amen. So listen. My wife and Bishop, everybody knows the story. Recently. So I, I waved to her. I said, how you doing? She didn't look at my face. Her attention was on my ring. She stared my ring so deeply and she hits her teeth and shake her head. So I said, 
What Marine did to this woman? <laughs> because she was directly looking Marine. So I told Bishop, Bishop said, either she angry that you marry, or marry didn't you how good. Eh? Or you marry, why are you speaking to me? You're right. But it's my duty to speak to everybody. We spoke to some people, they welcome us real good, regardless of our rings. Because their motive is not different, their intention is not different. The only reason you are getting angry for because your intention and your motive is not right. There are two reasons why people are jealous over you. One, because they want to be like you and they can't be. Two, they want to take what you belong for them, for them. And because they can't take it. But when you are disciplined, let me show you something. Give me Hebrew. Hebrew chapter something. <laughs> for something. <laughs> Discipline means to remove focus, to be consistent to where God wants you to be. If you don't know where you are from, you will never know where you are going. You forget where you are going. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you know, if you know what to do, automatically, you will know what next to do. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Lord, help me here. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's get a Hebrew quickly. I want to help you here. Because I see you achieving a lot of things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God will not disappoint you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 11. Media, help me here. I love how many people who say they are Christians. I just laugh. It's easy to say, though. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You can say anything you want to say. The only thing God gave you that is free, that talking. You can talk. You honor grace, grace works for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Everybody read. I want to get it. Give me for another translation. Let me see. I want to see the word. That's the word I'm looking for. New King James. I love the New King James. New King James Media. Okay. Go to NLT. 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 That's the word I'm looking for. Let us read together. Everybody read. One, two, three, go. No discipline is enjoyable. Why? It is happening. It is painful, but after war, there will be peaceful havoc of right living for those who train in this way. Don't expect discipline to be sweet. Don't expect to be enjoyable. The reason why a lot of us jump from place to place because we don't endure discipline. He order for you to even remain in your marriage and take out of discipline. When you are not a disciplined narrow person, you are an ordinary person. I repeat this. When you are not a disciplined narrow person, you are an ordinary person. And God did not call us to be ordinary. He called us to be extraordinary. You should have a value. You should raise your standard. In, 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 in God, there is nothing called low self-esteem. Low self-esteem, it was man who created that thing called low. God didn't make anybody low. He said, you are special. You are wonderful. You are higher. You are made in my image after my likeness. So God is telling us that when you want to achieve what is in you? He wants you to go on a discipline and forget about grace. When I say forget about grace, I don't mean that the grace is not coming there. It's grace not there. But don't realize, oh, I got a grace. I will do something. There are a lot of people have grace. Listen to me. All the ugly you see, 
they don't, man, they don't know what they call grace. Do you know what made them ugly to be where they are today? Because they discipline themselves. Little celebrity, they fulfill discipline. You see the man who, who's very skinny, or the person that is so skinny, they discipline themselves. Now the eat setting time. I'm asking somebody, like for example, I'm not talking about people who are born like that because there's some people in your family, there's no way you can't control it. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen, I'm saying about that. Amen. But the lady who, a bishop who is spiritual mom, I mean, man, the woman who eat. She's the fastest among us. She's the skinnier among us. She walk very fast when she walk in. Everyone are up behind. <laughs> Time to go eat. You will eat piece, just a piece of bread. That's it, and drink water. I said, my goodness. She said, she said, I've been disciplined today for many years. When you are not disciplined, you can't even pray. Because prayer requires discipline, a discipline in every life. When you start fresh, it hard. When I started praying from 12 to 5, it was not easy. But after a year later, I got used to it. Amen? It was painful, but at the end, it gave full. When you marry and decide to stick with one wife, you will see all up with me that were at, that I try to like your wife. But when you are disciplined, you keep your eyes on on her. When you see another woman and you know the hair she wearing, it looks so beautiful. Mark it in your hair. Get to the hair store, buy the sea hair for your wife and bring it for her. That's called discipline. Somebody shout hallelujah. If she wearing something that you admire, you see it on her. Mark it in your hair. Get to the store, buy the same thing for your wife. It's called discipline. If you are not disciplined, when you see her wearing something that attracted to you, you will follow. Because you're not disciplined. I never went out before and didn't buy anything for my wife. She right here. Every time, into every mall, every store. If I buy something for myself, I better buy something for her. Yes. Other than that, you will not enter the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's saying the car show until I get her home. It's called discipline life. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I left from me and my pastors from one to Ethiopia. We saw women. Hey. I want to audience about Baba. We saw women. We were three pastors. And one of the pastors, I will never forget this. One of the pastors said to me, what happened to Vegas? Stay in Vegas. <laughs> and I said, pastor, but that is not Vegas. <laughs> that is Ethiopia. <laughs> Guess what? All my two pastor friends, I'm not trying to bully them or anything or even call their names, but two of the whole church were calling me Chris and Co. <laughs> not that I couldn't do what they were doing, but I decided to be what? To be disciplined. That's it. Makes a difference. Amen? Yeah. Because when you are disciplined, you make that different. That's it. That's when you are disciplined, you make that different. That's it. When you are disciplined, Sooner or later, because whatever happened in darkness, trust me, I don't care how many years it will say come to life. As a matter of fact, there's nothing called secret when it's between two persons. No. Secret is only with you. So if you think you got secret, we know it. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We know it. Amen. So sooner or later, now listen, at the, at, at, the, at the time where you're not expecting to be exposed, yeah. that when you'll be exposed with evidence. We're evident. Because there are people that are exposed people or evident. But there will be evident. Somebody say evident. Evident. So that's the reason why the apostle Paul, before God told Paul, that Paul, my grace is sufficient. Let me see what Paul said. Go to me first Corinthians chapter 9. Let me see what Paul said. Are you happy? Amen. God is blessing somebody here now. In Jesus' precious name. Horrible oh, skila bahayaba. Thank you, Jehovah. First Corinthians chapter 9. 9, 9, 9, 9. First Corinthians. Lord, I want to help somebody. Amen. First Corinthians 9. Look up from the NLT. Verse 27. Let me show you something now. We can learn from Paul, right? We can learn from Paul. It will help us. <coughs> because until you do this thing, forget it. 
I look at you and laugh. Hallelujah. Let's see. Let's see what Paul said. Before God came to him and said, My grace is sufficient. Paul had disciplined life before the grace came to be sufficient. If your life is not disciplined, the grace will not do nothing. That's it. You're talking right. The grace will. Let's read together. I don't want you to share. Let's read. One, two, three, go. I discipline my body like an alley. Train it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to all of I myself might be disqualified. So now all preachers are qualified. Don't listen to any junk, social media, whatever. Check their lifestyle. One pastor said to me, Pastor Zono, Pastor Zono, my best friend in Minnesota, we lived together for some time. And then he said this to me. He said, this is what people say. He said, people say, hey, you know, he said, <coughs> what was it? Well, we're saying something. Hey, keep on to do. He said, he said, I'd rather be, I'd rather be with you who I know than to be with somebody who I don't know. Mm. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because I know you're in and out. Mm. So I'd rather be with you. Like Bishop put it this way. Bishop said, you'd rather be with an angel you know than an angel you don't know. Yeah. Don't try to know devil. No, 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 not how you put it. <laughs> because there's nothing good called devil. So you're not even good to know the devil. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This is what Paul put these things together. What did Paul say? I, what? I discipline like an athlete. Train it to do what it should. I train my body. So when I see another woman, I think on my wife. I train my body. When I see somebody with a red cup, I take clear cup. I train my body not to do what other I doing. Somebody shout hallelujah. I train my body. I train it in a way. Because I don't want to preach at the end of the day. And I feel like there are many who will preach and be disqualified. Many will say, oh, not the Lord, Lord, they will not preach. They will not prophesy. They will not do miracle. We didn't bring souls to the kingdom. And Paul will say, depart from me. You work of iniquities. He said, I only accept those who do the will of my father. The will of God. So many people will not want to sit down in church because they don't want to listen to the truth. They want to listen to somebody that will say, receive it. You will get a new house. You will get a new car. You will get a new man. The Bible did not promise you those things with all a holy life. The Bible said, be holy and pursue peace with all men which no man can see the law. Am I speaking to somebody here? A Christian man not so holy there. You are not a Christian. You are a cry here. Nobody hear what I'm saying. Somebody shout hallelujah. Any Christian with all holiness, you are not a Christian, you are a Christ head, crack head, crack head. Something is wrong. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Do you know how many connections Bijou is making? Because these are people who watch my life. They can boast of my life. For 23 years, he coming next week. I have never said no to him. I have never argued with him. I was reminding some of the things he told me. And later on, after many years, I found out that all he was telling me was true. And I was sharing it with him in the hotel. I didn't go do research to see whether he was talking the truth. Anytime your pastor tells you something, you want to go do research, you want to go ask other people, that means you believe in him. Somebody shout hallelujah. You don't believe in him. Tell your pastor, let's get to the Bible, puppy. Let's see what the Bible say. The Bible is a place of truth. Let's see. If your pastor, that what Bishop explained to me, if I look, if I have different opinion on the word, and my pastor or my bishop say, no, this is how it, it should be, I forget my own opinion. And Father, because Paul said, follow me as a father Christ. I watch your life. Your life is a most precious life on earth. That somebody can follow as an example. Bishop said something to us this few days. The faster way to your destination is not in plane. He said it to us. The faster way to your destination is not in plane, it's in shape. 
You get the bill. Which kind of shape you get in? Relationship, friendship, fellowship. <laughs> Amen. If you follow the wrong friendship, it will lead you to disaster. Because one of the ships will get you to where you want to go. One of eight. One of the ships will take you to hell, or one of the ships take you to heaven. So which ship are you part of? Relationship, or friendship, or fellowship? Amen. Amen. Oh my goodness. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. We are rushing to the top. Amen. God, God told me the other day. I'm not one of those who say God saying God ain't say anything. And I kept crying to God. I said, Lord, I got all the gifts, the preaching, the prophecy. Lord, I just tired seeing the same people every time. The Lord said a word to me. I never asked me again. He said this word to me. Heaven be my word. He said, I'm testing you with a few. And I'm testing you. He said, time will come. You won't be able to handle what I'm going to give you. Hallelujah. And I said, Lord, even if I can't see one person who preach, even Amen. if, which of course, I don't wonder. Amen. Because I did not die for the church. I can't save the church. I can't try to save somebody. Come to church, come to church. I can't. I didn't die for the church. Christ is the one who died. I can't protect the church. Christ is the one who protects the church. So the only thing he coming to do to edify the church. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So let's read that scripture again. He said, I beat, I mean, I discipline my what? And bring it, and, 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 and what? And bring it to suggestion or other translations. Say, to treat it. So when God said that, God said, man, Grace is now sufficient for you. Why? Because you are disciplining your body. God will never waste grace on people who are not disciplined. He don't do that. Be disciplined. Be disciplined. Somebody say hallelujah. Be disciplined. If a man refuse to be disciplined, Delilah will think for you. Because to live a disciplinary life as a man of God is to focus on one panel. Because Delilah is at the door waiting for you to take your strength and to take your future. For the women who are not stable, for every turn, Dick and Harry, they follow. Goliath is waiting for you to continue to lie to you 24-7 because you're not focused. You are not disciplined. Some of the show, hallelujah. hallelujah. Some of you, you are with a panel only because of the bills. It is wrong. Do you know how many people live together but they are not together? There are people who are in a seahorse, but they are separated. They are only there because of bills. If I jump out of that relationship, how would I manage? But I come to let you know, if it is not right for you, jump out because God got something better for you. Whatever the son of God will never stay. If what you can't end tomorrow, don't start today because your tomorrow is your today. Am I speaking to somebody here? Oh my goodness, don't mind her eyes, don't mind her shape, don't mind her color. My goodness, they have the ladder in this guy. Some of them come, they are already on the water. They're coming to attract to, to, to destroy your anointing. Can I speak like I feel it? Somebody shout hallelujah. Focus! Control yourself! Women, not everyone asks for yourself who no more you give it. Be free to say no. Sometimes saying no does not mean you are mean. Saying no can save you from a lot of heartbreaks. Am I talking to some out of here? Because not everyone that asks for your number and really want your number. They want something else. Be trained and discipline yourself. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Judges chapter 16, verse 15, the Bible says, Delilah persuaded Goliath until, I mean, uh, uh, something until she cut his hair. She didn't just stop by cutting his hair. She also plucked his eyes up. His eye represents his vision. She plucked his vision. She, 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 she made sure that something died before she, her mission was accomplished. We are following things that want to kill us, but they say we are following it because of also appearance. The also appearance is very deceptive. You kind of look at the heart, then you know what is after. Can I tell somebody here? Because the tall man you see today, he can go down. The tall man you see today can get shut up. My goodness, nobody hear what I'm saying. Somebody shout hallelujah. Just look at the devil. Say, devil, you are a liar. I'm a discipline myself in the law. Discipline is something that is painful, but the scripture that at the end result, you will enjoy it. Discipline yourself. Somebody shout hallelujah. There's a man who I came to realize uh, this guy was a man who for the discipline never life. His name is Joseph. Joseph entered Potiphar's house. He went try to knock him down, fool him, and try to sleep with him. She had she she she, she enticed him with her look. She enticed him with money. She enticed him with everything. But Joseph said one thing. He said, Woman, I know what the ladder did to something. You're not gonna be the one of those to take my destiny, to take my future. And hear what Joseph said. Joseph said, No, I can't do this dirty things and sin against God. Can I hear somebody saying that? I can't do this thing and sin against God. Why? Joseph was able to control himself because Joseph was disciplined. He was not all over the place. He disciplined himself. Many of you are not disciplined the money. To really keep money, you got to be disciplined. Amen? Amen. <coughs> when it comes to money, you gotta be disciplined number one. Be disciplined and know what to do to control yourself. Number two, don't touch what is not yours. When you are disciplined, don't touch what is not yours. Control yourself. Don't what? Touch what is not yours. Anything you touch what is not yours, you break yourself. God told Adam and Eve, don't touch the middle. You want to live long? Don't touch the tar. Amen. How many of you can pay tar? I want to talk to you one on one because you are breaking the church. Go, who you're responsible. Ties don't belong to pastors, tie don't belong to church. Tie is belong to God. I mean, I was trying to tell you that tie is not what Pastor instructed you to do. It is God. Whenever you touch that 10%, they not they become useless. Many people, that's why they will continue to be beggar. God didn't call you to be a beggar. But be the reason why you are a beggar because you are touching what is not yours. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You are touching what is not yours. The tie is now for you. It is for God. Don't touch it. Ten percent belong to Him. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. By the grace of God, we don't play with that. Especially my wife, she reminds you every day for even a dime. Someone shout amen. For even a dime, pay your tithe. Amen. amen. Because the tithe, when you are not disciplined, you can't. Now, if you can't pay your tithe. For 500 adults, God will not even give you 100 out, 100,000. It will be too big for you. But do you know the reason why a lot of people, they don't have grace that will help them to discipline themselves in top payment. Some within are doing it to the church. Amen. How many people in the church? Well, not that much. How many people pay tax? Not good 20%. Hallelujah. Yeah, brother, amen. He will take me to do grocery shopping every week. I enter any grocery shopping there with a man of in my house. I spend 400 hours. Every week, every week, two times in the week, I cook. Until my cousin said, the day I moved from the house, auntie, you made me listen. I can't even cook again. But every day I must cook. I don't ask nobody. I, by the grace of God. So imagine if I were taking money from the church, 400, 800 a week.
Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 800 a week. Amen. Amen. They feel it. Honestly, you know, hear my head. She's the church rent, have not paid. My money where somebody blessed me with about my print ticket. She took it and paid church rent. I can't I force him. I said, why you did this? She said, because you are still going to give it. I said, how you know I was still going to give it? You buy my ticket to go to Liberia. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Why? Because you think you're doing it. You're not disciplined. I love when they play quiet like this. Hallelujah. Something is sinking inside of you. Amen. Now, the only life that God requires us to live as Christians is a discipline every life. And that's, do you know the reason why a lot of people, I'm going to stop here because it's too much. It's too much to give you. Hmm? Discipline. Number, number, number three here, never forget what somebody has done for you. Amen. When you want to be disciplined, be disciplined. Even if somebody buy you a gas, one, Bishop was telling me something in the hotel, and I get to him and to get talking because he's watching. Amen. He said, everyone I ever taught in scripture, when you quote in that scripture, he made reference to that person. When you not made reference, pride into you. You didn't come to this far by yourself. You sat down on people's grace. Make reference. The way he just taught all right, I have to make reference. I said, it's the bishop who taught about the relationship. Amen. If somebody ever gave you ride before, be grateful. Just because now you got your own right don't mean that somebody didn't help you along the way. But many are not disciplined to that, and that's the reason why God cut down supply line for them. I was just telling one of my sons in Liberia, there's a girl, I'm not going to call her name, there's a girl, I honestly know him, or Tom, I was just telling him, that there's a girl who, she was out of job, she was a very big time girl. She didn't have no job, she didn't have nowhere to stay, they evicted her. She called me crying, 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 crying for money. And I said, Tom, no problem. I will help her. She will call me, Sister Carlo. Day and night, she will ring my phone. Call me, Pastor Phil, if you don't help me, I don't know where I'm going to be. I'm talking about a big time girl. I went to Western Union. At the time, there was no uh, wave money. Same wave. And I gave her some money. I don't want to call her a man. Glory be to God. She's Tom told me that she sat down on the spot and she cried. Because this is thing that she was not expecting. But after the government came to power and employed the girl, gave her house, gave her car, she don't even want to hear who need Tom that helped her to connect her with me to help her with money. She don't want to even, unless she even know me. When we call this girl number, she pays it. She pays it. She pays it. She working in this that. But yes, so yeah, the same person I was begging, please, I need this. Ungratefulness will end you to disaster. Yeah. When you are not a grateful person, you, you, you will never be full. No. Because the reason why God wants you to be full continuously, to be grateful to somebody who helped you along the way. That's how Christians have been hindered. I refuse for anything to hinder my life. I try by all means to make peace with all men. I try every day not to be ungrateful. I train myself. I discipline myself to do what God has called me to do. Because it pays you at the end. Somebody shout hallelujah. It pays. Discipline your life. Discipline yourself to the tie. Don't take God tie. It's not yours. Amen. Why are you taking what is yours? You used to taking what is not yours. That's why you're taking other people, man. Because if you used to taking the tie, you can take anything with all fear. If you can steal from God, who you can steal from? If you can steal from God. If you can steal from God. Certificate. If you can steal from God, who you can steal from? If you brave enough, you will fear God. Talk about the time for the people who eat my money, they don't order. That people tell you to pay that God. Hallelujah. No oh, matter God, husband did not find a job for two years. I talk about fresh food. She was the first to waste fresh food the next two days. Her husband found a job. That's our right job. Because when you obey what God instructs you to obey, the blessing open over your life. Because many people will not do it because why? They are not disciplined to do that. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor say amen. Look at your neighbor say amen. Look at your neighbor say amen. Now help me. Let me help you this. Now listen to this. 
Titus chapter 2, 11. Titus 2, 11 say this. He said, what? The grace of God appeared to all men. Ain't that right? We talked that before, right? The grace of God appeared where? To all men. But not discipline appeared to all men. So, the grace of God is there. But discipline is lacking. When discipline is lacking, any girl that pass by you with big butts, you will look at her. With big breasts, you will look at her. You're not disciplined. I'm the man who preach gospel. I don't compromise the gospel. You will st- you will- there are many men who don't have cross eyes, but because of looking, they have cross eyes. Because anything that happens, they're not disciplined. Somebody shout hallelujah. They will be working with their wife. Oh, what you want to You're not disciplined. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Discipline that will help you. Live on God. Want you. Paul said, I beat my body and bring it on a suggestion. So when I preach, I can't be disqualified. Be disciplined. There are some things now you all don't touch it. 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 It's not. It's not for you. He said, he said what? He said, the grace of God appeared to all men, right? Let me give you the scripture, then I close. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Second Corinthians 9, 8. Let's look at Second Corinthians 9, 8. Let me get it from the New King James Version. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was, that was my mind. Yeah. That's all right. The message is over now. I've been shooting you. Amen. Let's see this. I need the oh, I need the river. I need the oh, bless me now. Mm, I have come, I have come to thee. Let's take it again one more time. I need thee.
Listen, 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 listen. Hear this. Lord, son, Lord, Lord. We come and hear this. I want everybody to look at this scripture. And what God said. Look at this scripture. And God what? Read with me. And God is able to make all grace. grace. Abound towards you. That you always have you all sanctification in all things may have an abundance for every good way. Stop there. Let me explain it quickly. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Can, 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 I, can I speak to you, Pastor Coles? Let me speak to Pastor Coles here because he will understand my language. Hear this. Hear this. Now listen to me. I, I don't need the grace of God. Nobody hearing what I'm saying. Can you, can you understand what I'm saying? I don't need the grace of God. Do you know, this is, there are people that got grace in fornication, they don't fornicate. There are people that got grace with money, they don't take people money. There are people that got grace for lying, they don't really lie. But there are others who don't have grace for it. So just because you got grace for a certain thing, and your friend don't have that grace, don't bully them. Because the grace of God that God will give you is by mention. There are certain areas of your life that you don't have grace. And that's what the Apostle Paul said in the scripture, I don't need some grace, I need all grace. Nobody hear what I'm saying. Can I speak to somebody? Why do you need all grace to do all things? I, oh my goodness. I want everybody to lift your voice and say, I need all grace. I need all grace. I need all grace. Listen. Listen. You don't need some grace. Because if you need some grace, you will just do some things. Can I talk to somebody here? And that's why when the Lord showed me this scripture, judging on this morning, I said, oh God, so that means we need all grace to do all things. There are some grace that will help you in infirmity. There are some grace that are going to help you in certain things that you can't do. But in order to do all things, you need all grace. You need all grace to be disciplined. You need all grace to be faithful. You need all grace to be humble. You need all grace not to take something that is not yours. So if you got grace in certain area, you need to ask God for all grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you chicken, but you faithful. You need some grace. Somebody share hallelujah. Maybe you faithful, but you rule. You need grace. Maybe you're not rule, but you can't give. You need some grace. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can I talk to somebody here? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need all grace. I don't know who that kid will talk to. I want to speak to somebody who understands my language. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't need some grace, but I need all grace to do all things. I need grace in any area of my life. I need grace in any area. Maybe I'm a liar. I need grace. I don't give. I need grace to humble myself. Somebody shout hallelujah. Listen. I came to realize that the, 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 the one thing can give you all grace. Only one thing. <coughs> Only one thing. When you're lacking nothing, you will have plenty of shortcoming. When you're lacking nothing. Do you know what is that? When you're lacking humility, you will not have all things. Because the Bible says he gave more grace to the one, to the humble. So if you want all grace, be all humble. Mm, I ain't got no help here. Is somebody hearing me here? You, you, you humble in certain things, but you're not humble. How can you have grace? If you want all grace to do all things, be humble. Slap your neighbor, say, be humble. To get more grace. Every time I'm running out of grace, I be more humble, honey. Ways. If it costs me to need that and even watch the restroom, I need grace. I need all grace. If it costs me to submit to my parents, to my bishop, and, and do what they want me to do, I am coming to love them, to submit to my pastor. I will do it because the more I'm humble, the more grace I have. I will not be because I got PhD or I got master and my pastor don't have it. So I should look down on him. No, I need to be humble to get all grace because I 
new all grace if you are here and you don't know what I'm talking about I come to talk to you you need to be humble you need to be humble to get all grace because you need a grace you need a grace you need a grace to do certain things but if you are not humble If you are not humble, I need you. If you are not humble, I need how can you get grace? Every hour, I need you. Bless me now. Jesus name. Everybody take out your 10%. Low what is in your account and take out time for it. It's a command that I'm giving. Everyone, I'm not talking about the time you've been paying. Check your account balance and pay time of what is in your account. Pay 10%. From today, go with side with discipline. You came to church, you did not pay your time. Maybe you have taken your time, but I just want you by obedience. Just look your account. Say, Lord, even though I paid time on the money, but I'm going to pay 10% to you because I love you. 10% to the church. Not to me. I ain't want to. Time goes to the church. Take 10%. Are you here tonight? 